I think I appreciate the simplicity of it a lot more. Um, it's a lot, you know, the old country music was a lot of it anyways, was a lot less produced, um, a lot less watered down, there was a lot more grit to it. Um, and to me it's the kind of music that just kind of always naturally called to me, it made a little more sense in, um, in terms that I'm kind of an old fashioned guy in a lot of ways. So uh, you know, the, there's imperfections and dirtiness in the old country music that uh, like a, a lack of sophistication and a lot of the newer country music is so overproduced and over glossed over and made to be appealing to so many different groups of people that uh, it, I think it just loses any real edge that it's got you know when it's washed over with all this sort of you know modern glitz and glamour so it's kind of a natural choice for me. <laughs> I think I draw from, you know, I think when I first started writing music, uh, I had a lot more, there was there was a lot more uh, specific influence in mind with each song. There was, um, you know, I'd write a song and I'd, I'd be listening to a lot of Hank Williams, so I'd write a song that had kind of a Hank, a Hank Williams vibe to it. Or I'd be listening to a lot of Johnny Paycheck and I'd write something with a lot of that. And uh, I still think of a, you know, a handful of artists as my main influences from back then, um, but I think my the influence has become kind of one big wash to me now, you know, where it, it all sort of equally influences me and I don't as much work to emulate one specific sound or singer or anything like that in particular. And when I first started out, I very much tried to in my singing and the phrasing and the lyrics, everything. And um, so, you know, the, the, the main ones that really have stuck with me, you know, over the years is obviously all George Jones' work is sort of the, the classic for me. And, and the spectrum of what he did in his career is so varied, but you know all of it so good. Um, there's another singer by the name of Del Reeves who wrote a, uh, wrote a lot of great country songs and kind of had a, a really a, a very heavy tongue in cheek sense of humor above a lot of other country singers. You know, he's just a very comical and kind of self deprecating guy, and uh, that sort of fell in line with you know how I like to perform and sort of be as as a performer and. Um, and then I've, I was always a big fan of Johnny Paycheck, and a lot of his stuff is, to some degree, a very overblown, uh, you know, and into the early 70s, his recordings got, you know, really wild and almost to the point of being cheesy, but there was just, they were so good that, uh, you know, and his message was always so badass, you know, the guy was like a bad dude. He did a lot of drugs and he shot a guy and he just, you know, it's like something about him just really like kind of stuck with me. Um, 
And of course, all the original greats, the ones that I first listened to, you know, obviously Hank Williams, and Roy Acuff, and Johnny Cash, and all those guys, you know, were really heavy early influences for me. But, but those three, you know, kind of steered me in, in a certain direction, I think, that I kind of stuck with. I didn't start out playing country music on an electric guitar. I started out on a banjo and a, and a broken old Sears catalog guitar from 1920. And so I like to play some, some old, old, old country music before they even called it country music to sort of uh, give you guys a taste of where my roots come from. And this is an old bluegrass song written by the late great king of bluegrass himself, Mr. Jimmy Martin. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, you know, it's funny because when I was a lot younger, um, you know, in the early 90s, you know, it was, it was sort of like kids listened to whatever was on the radio. It, you weren't really necessarily, a, if you lived in the city, which when I was a kid I did, um, you didn't really, you didn't get so specifically into just rap or just rock and roll or just, you know, you're too young to kind of know or develop your own identity based on a really specific genre of music. So. You know, amongst all the other stuff on the radio, there was George Strait and Alan Jackson and Randy Travis, and so that stuff always stuck with me. And it actually took me a handful of years to come back around to it because I kind of shelved it along with all the '90s and early 2000s country that I absolutely hated. You know, and thought was just terrible music. And so those came back into the fold for me. You know, maybe seven or eight years ago, it was like, oh, wait a minute, like there's some real jewels in here. You know, and uh, so I think, but I think the the sound of that always kind of stuck with me and that, you know, I think of that as being sort of the last great heyday of country music was like the late 80s and into the early 90s and eventually, you know, it got replaced with a whole slew of other kinds of, you know, what's called country music that's further from the origins of it than that stuff was. So, so definitely, you know, I think there's some subtle influence just hearing it a lot in my childhood. So I was hanging out doing a little interview with if, uh, if my music taste crossed into the modern country world at all. And generally speaking, the answer is no. Pretty definite no. But uh, there are a few guys that shined through the dark, dark era of the late 80s and the early 90s and kept it real the whole time. One of those, one of the greatest is George Strait. So I'm going to play a George Strait song for you guys. I just can't get enough of it. It's really silly and kind of dumb, but goddamn, it's a good song. So. Thank you. 
straight definitely, from the way. Definitely, definitely, yeah. And that's what's cool. Um, you know, I was actually really nervous about a few of the songs on the new record being a little uh, chronologically referenced to modern. Uh, and there's one song on there that we were recording uh, that we kept joking was we, we called it the arena hit. And so every time we were going to do a cut of it in the studio, it's like, all right, let's play the arena hit, man. Like, hello, Dallas, how we doing? Houston Astrodome, but. Uh, but yeah, that you know, I finally I think I got, you know, comfortable enough around the more modern country stuff, and I and I found parts of it that I liked. That you know, as my writing progressed, you know, naturally something with a little more modern influence kind of came out of it. So. Yeah, like uh, there's a song "Return to Cinder" on there that's super fast, and you know, driving, and then the Gear Jam and Daddy song, which is a real popular one. Um, you know, I think I I kind of I. I think on the first record I, I stuck within my confines a little bit more um, and the only way that I could figure to really pack a punch behind a song was to really put some rock and roll energy behind it and uh, I think as I've gotten a little older and written more I've found ways that you know I can put the same kind of attitude into a song without necessarily making it a full blown like you know wheels out rocker but uh, but yeah it's it's, uh, it's fun to expand a little bit more and, and uh, see that there's a lot of people in my generation who went through the same thing that they you know they, they shunned all of the country that we that was on the radio when we were growing up and you know now it's like compared to what we're getting handed off of the commercial country charts now that stuff is just pure gold and so it's like we've, a lot of us have sort of come full circle to it and feeling like okay we identify with this so. Yeah. 